welcome again to another video of Baga Ara. And in today's lesson, we're going to discuss the cell cycle. Okay, so these are the things that we're going to um, explain or yeah, discuss. So first is the cell division, chromosome, uh, the structure of your chromosome, the cell cycle, the phases of your cell cycle and its control system. Next is the cancer cells. And lastly, we'll have a quick summarization of all the topics. Okay, so let's start with the cell division. So cell division basically is the process by which a parent cell divides into two or more daughter cells. So most of the time we confuse mitosis as cell division. Well, that's correct, but not all cell division is just a mitosis because we have other types than cell division. All right. So the functions of cell division includes the reproduction, growth and development, and tissue renewal so for the reproduction basically that is just the continuity of life so if you have your sperm cell and your egg cell and they unite together so remember your egg cell and your sperm cell uh they are the product of your meiosis diba? so when they unite together uh you'll have the will have the zygote and then that zygote will undergo several division and until it reaches the or until it becomes an entire organism so that thing, that is the man the process of growth and development. So growth is the irreversible change in size of cell, and the development is a progression from earlier to later stage. So we also have your tissue renewal. So when we say tissue renewal, that is just the production of new cell for the development and repair of another tissue. So let's say for example, your skin cell naghilot ka ganyan, tapos since exfoliated na siya, ang mangyayari is don't worry, hindi ka naman mauubusan ng cells here because you still have new cells that is being um, produced in the basal layer of your skin and it will make its way up here sa outer surface to to uh, to parang uh, replace the ones na nawala during exfoliation. Okay? Next is the types of cell division. So we have the binary fission and the mitosis and meiosis. So basically, binary fission is a type of asexual reproduction in prokaryotes such as bacteria. And in binary fission, the division of cell results to an entire organism. So ibig sabihin, pag meron ka daw, uh, yung bacterial cells daw, uh, nangyayari is if when they divide, when they undergo binary fission, automatically, nagkakaroon ka na another type of bacteria or another type of uh, an entire organism. While in mitosis and meiosis, the thing is, uh, it happens lang, even though it produces uh, the end product of mitosis and meiosis is daughter cells, it does not constitute to the whole organism itself. Diba? Kasi nga, we are multicellular organism. So we define mitosis as a cell division that results in two daughter cells having the exact number and exact kind of chromosome that can be found in the parent's nucleus while in meiosis MM, it is a process where a single cell divides twice and produces four cells containing half the original original amount of the genetic information now let's go to the structure of your chromosome so in prokaryotes uh, they have uh, single circular chromosomes while in eukaryotes they have more than one linear chromosomes. Yay! And scientists says that in humans, the genome length is about 2 meters or 7 feet per cell. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin nun, uh, ma-amaze na lang din kayo kasi your, your genome is actually um, coiled, tightly coiled to the point na yung 2 to 7, uh, 2 meters or 7 feet na yun, nagkakasya siya sa super, super liit na cell. Okay, and by the way, guys, genome is defined as the cell's genetic information, or I mean, all of the cell's genetic information, including the ones that can be found in your mitochondria. Okay, so in humans, we have 46 chromosomes, in mouse, we have 40, and fruit fly, marin sila, it. Now, the question is, how is DNA packed into chromosome? Because maybe we become parang uh, nalilito tayo. Kung paano nangyari yun, from a long chain of your DNA to a chromosome. So, what happens is this. So, here for example, meron tayong double helix na DNA. And your DNA is composed of the um, nitrogenous bases, your G, C, A, and T. And 
this DNA will coil or parang will wrap around the histone. So, histone is a type of protein. So, parang nag-wrap around dyan yung DNA nyo and will form your nucleosome. So, this nucleosome will further uh, coil together. They will somehow develop loops or scaffold until it reaches its form na maging katulad nitong chromatid. So, this one that is the chromatid, and if it undergoes uh, replication, it will become sister chromatid. So, sisters, kasi dalawa na sila. Yay! Okay, now what's the importance of chromosomes being duplicated or replicated before cell division? So, duplicated chromosome will lead to the uh, formation of your sister chromatids attached by a central mirror. Okay? Okay, so the importance of that is because once you replicated your chromosome, yan, again, sister chromatid na sila, so when it undergoes your um, division, or I mean, when it undergoes the mitosis proper, ang mangyayari is one, uh, one cell will receive this kind of, the same, one cell will receive the same genetic material and the other one will uh, receive the same genetic material then. So, parang, uh, especially my doses. So, yun. Nagkakaroon sila ng uh, parang hatian. So, one sister chromatid here and one sister chromatid here. So, what will happen if, for example, hindi siya nagkaroon ng replication? So, the tendency is parang isang cell lang yung magkakaroon ng sister chromatid or ng genetic information and then the other cell wala siyang genetic information. So, ano mangyayari sa cell na yun? Of course, it will not function well. I mean, kasi de there are cells na uh, wala namang nucleus. Like, for example, there are RBCs, di ba? Wala namang silang nucleus, but they can still function. Pero, if that cell needs to have the genetic information, of course, that will be bad kasi wala na siyang uh, wala na siyang genetic material. Okay? Next is, let's differentiate your somatic cells from your gametes. So, somatic cells are the body cells. So, basically, it constitutes to your whole body. It, it makes up the majority of the organism and their chromosomal content is 2N or diploid. So, ibig sabihin, you have two of each type of chromosome and they divide by mitosis. So, in humans, we have 46 chromosomes. And uh, gametes sa man, they are sex cells. So, we just have two types, the sperm and the egg. So, in haploid, one of each type, uh, I mean, in sex cells, we have haploid cells. Parang we call it haploid because it just have one of each type of chromosome and they divide by meiosis. So, in humans, we have 23. Okay. So, now we'll go to the phases of the cell cycle. So, basically, we just have two. The interface and the mitotic phase. But the thing is, your interface is subdivided into three phases pa. We call that your G1, your S phase, and your G2 phase. So, G, uh, during, <laughs> during your G1 phase, what happens is your cell prepares to grow. It, it's actually growing now. It starts to grow and carries out normal functions. And your organism also uh, starts to replicate. Okay? Next is your... Uh, S phase. So, what happens during the S phase is your DNA is being synthesized or your DNA is being replicated. And after that, it will now go to the G2 phase. So, the G2 phase, it is where your cell is being prepared for the division. And, oh my gosh, after the G2 phase, it will now go to the process of the mitotic phase. I mean, it will now go to the mitotic phase. So, uh, under the mitotic phase, we have two divisions pa, your mitosis and your cytokinesis. So, mitosis basically is just the division of the nucleus and cytokinesis is the division of your cytoplasm. And let's say, for example, it's successful, it undergoes your uh, cytokinesis na, now you have your cells. Yay! Meron ka ng two daughter cells which has the same genetic material as of its parents. So, so don't parang be confused. We're just talking, talking about your mitosis here. Okay? That's why um, uh, it has the same genetic material. So, it will come a time then that this particular cell here will undergo its own cell cycle. 
Okay? So, here is your mitosis. So, mitosis uh, includes the prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So, mitosis pala, katulad ng sabi ko kanina, mayroon siyang two divisions, your karyokinesis and cytokinesis. So, when you see karyokinesis, that is the division of your nucleus, and cytokinesis is the division of your cytoplasm. I know, alam na alam yun na to. So, review lang tayo ulit. So, first is a prophase. So, what happens during your prophase is your chromosomes begin to condense into visible threads. So, remember, di ba, whenever we draw your interface, ang itsura niya is like this, tapos nandito yung genetic material. And then, pag magda-drawing na tayo ng prophase, bigla-bigla, ang nangyayari is, uh, we disintegrate yung parang we have this broken circle here to represent the disintegration of your nuclear membrane. And aside from that, we parang we draw your chromosomes like an X. Ganyan. So, ibig sabihin nun, from this long thread of chromatin, long thread of chromatin, for example, ganyan siya. Diba nga? Ang nangyayari is, it will condense to become visible threads. And another is, yeah, the nuclear disappear and at the same time, your nuclear membrane disintegrates. So, nawawala na yung nuclear membrane nyo. Also, as you can see, your centrioles begin to migrate to the poles of your cell. And the, the spindle fiber also begins to form. Okay? So, the reason why your uh, nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane begins to disintegrate, that is because para to make way for the spindle fiber to be attached dun sa kinetochore ng inyong chromosome. Okay? Okay. And yeah, we consider prophase as the longest phase of your mitosis. So, next is the metaphase. So, the metaphase, um, it is where the chromosomes line up a single file located on the equator or metaphase plate and the centrosomes are at the opposite poles of the cell. So, spindle fibers run from centrosomes to the centromeres of the chromosomes. So, ano daw nangyayari dito? So, di ba, uh, during your prophase, nag-disintegrate na yung nuclear membrane nyo. So, ibig sabihin, your chromosomes are free. Yay! Free na sila. And because of that, since um, nag-start na rin mag-move yung uh, centrioles nyo here sa both uh, ends or both poles, nangyayari is na uh, kakaroon na rin ang production ng spindle fiber. So, the spindle fiber will attach to your chromosome. He, specifically here in the kinetochore. So, kinetochore is a protein na nandun sa gilid ng, ng centromere. So, you need to understand the spindle fiber, hindi siya umaattend, uh, umaattach doon sa centromere, like directly dito sa chromosome, but dito sa protein around the centromere, which is your kinetochore. So, it will attach there. Ayan, we got a shit there. And because of that attachment, somehow, uh, it will line up this chromosome dun sa middle part. Kasi parang siyang nagtatag of four. Tag of four yung nangyayari. So, it will be lined up dito sa gitna. And, yeah. When it undergoes a process of anaphase, the centromeres of each chromosome will separate. So, di ba? Here is your chromosome again. It is the centromere. So, centromere yung nagko-connect sa two sister chromatids. So, nandito yung uh, kinetochore nyo. And then, since hinihila nga siya from both sides, nangyayari is, yeah, nagsiseparate na sila. So, the anaphase is the shortest phase of mitosis. Next is the telophase and cytokinesis. So, sa telophase naman, we could, uh, uh, we could say na telophase is the opposite of your prophase kasi lahat ng nawala doon sa prophase bumabalik siya na sa telophase. For example, since di ba nag-divide na or parang uh, the chromosome, the cluster of chromosome has already been at the opposite side, opposite, opposite part. Nandito na yung mga chromosome yun. Nandito na sila. Opposite part na sila ng cell. Nangyayari is, oh my gosh, dapat si uh, single chromatid lang siya. Okay, sorry. Wala sa mabra. Ayan. So, ang nangyari is, nagkakaroon na ulit ng reappearing of your um, cell membrane, ay, cell membrane, nuclear, nuclear envelope. So, nagkakaroon ka na ulit ng nuclear envelope and uh, the super coiled chromosomes after that begins to unravel. So, hindi na sila ganyan katik. So, parang magiging ganto na ulit sila. Ganyan. 
Okay. So that's the telophase. And after the telophase, it will undergo the process of cytokinesis. So in cytokinesis, sa animals, there would be a pinching of plasma membrane. So parang first, they will form the cleavage furrow. Yan, nagkakaroon ng cleavage furrow. And from that, magkakaroon ng pinching maghihiwalay na yung cytoplasm. But in the cytokinesis in plant cell, ang nangyayari is, instead of it being really like separated, katulad nito at uh, formation of cleavage furrow, ang meron sila is a cell plate. So that cell plate will eventually become the uh, cell wall of your cell. So still, uh, you'll have two daughter cells. So that is the example of cell division, the animal, and sa plant cell, we have that. Okay, so which phases of cell cycle can you identify? So most of it uh, is under your interface. So for example, this interface, this is interface. What else? Interface, 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 interface. So here, uh, we could say that this is your yay, anaphase, and this is your telophase, and this is your uh, metaphase. So they look they look like they're like aligned. Okay, so let's say this is your metaphase and anaphase. Yeah, we're done. So, uh, this is your prophase. Okay, so anong napapansin natin na most of the cell, ang nangyayari is they are in the interface kasi nga 90% of, uh, 90% of their life, parang 90% of the cell cycle, they, uh, parang they spend it during the interface. Okay, now we're going to talk about your spindle apparatus. So, kanina, di ba, parang during your, uh, during the process of uh, metaphase and anaphase, uh, nababanggit na yung spindle fibers or spindle apparatus. So, basically, uh, your spindle apparatus is composed of a network of protein filaments, mostly of your microtubules. So, what happens is uh, the centrosome, so the construction of your spindle fibers or your spindle apparatus begins at the centrosome where the centrioles are and works toward the chromosome. Diba? Nangyayari is during your prophase, your centrosome, centrosomes, magmove sila on the opposite direction and magkakaroon ka na ng uh, formation of your spindle fiber. And once that spindle fiber is okay na, it will attach to the kinetochore of the centromere of the replicated chromosome. Okay? So once it is fully attached na, attached na siya dun sa uh, kinetochore, what will happen is that your motor proteins will basically parang walk. Parang parang walk. Parang kasi nga, since naka-attach na yung spindle fiber dun sa kinetochore ng sister chromatids mo, it will pull your uh, pull your chromosomes apart. Yay! Gaganyan na sila. So, apart or towards the opposite poles using ATP as a source of energy. And the non kinetochore spindles are used to push the poles farther apart to elongate the cell and to help produce the cleavage furrow. So I don't know if you observed it earlier. For example, your cell as it uh, parang progress dun sa mitotic phase, palaki ng palaki yung cell nyo. Of course, kailangan niyang gawin yun para ma-stretch yung cell para, para uh, it will uh, elongate the cell kasi nga magde-divide siya into two. So, ang nangyayari is hindi lahat ng spindle fiber is naka-attach dun sa kinetochore. Yung ibang, yung ibang spindle fiber nyo is for the cell to be elongated. Okay? And to help produce a cleavage for rodent. Okay? So now, bacterial cells divide by binary fission. Ito lang din sinabi ko kanina. So, paano nangyayari yun? So, ang nangyayari is um, the chromosome Replication begins. So, <laughs> katulad ng parang sa, sa eukaryotes, di ba, nangyayari, it undergoes the S phase. So, nangyayari naman dito is it will undergo your, uh, the replication nga ng genetic material. And pag mayroon ka ng two copies of the original, uh, parang two copies of the original genetic material, mangyayari is uh, magde-divide lang yung cytoplasm ng bacterial cell mo. So, parang magde-divide lang siya into two. And now you have two daughter cells ng bacteria. Yay! Now, we're, now we're here sa so cell cycle control system. So, this checkpoint is one of the several points in the eukaryotic cell cycle at which the progression of a cell to the next stage in the cycle can be halted 
halted until conditions are favorable. It is a control point where stop or go signals regulate the cell cycle. So basically, pag may checkpoint, hindi naman to yung parang yung checkpoint na meron tayo na kailangan mo pakita yung yung ID mo para makalagpas ka. Pero kasi dito sa checkpoint na nangyayari lang is it needs to check. Kaya nga checkpoint eh. Kailangan niyang i-check yung mga bagay na na dapat meron yung isang cell for it to go to the next step or to the next phase. So it will receive a stop or go signals. So that is how the cell regulates the cell cycle. Okay, so first is the G1 checkpoint. So what happens during your G1 checkpoint is basically it um it parang checks. It checks if the cell has the appropriate size, it if it has the adequate energy reserves, and of course, as early as that, check yan na if okay yung DNA mo or if damage your DNA. Kasi if it's damaged, hindi na siya magtutuloy dun sa S phase. Kasi nga, pag nagtuloy siya dun, tapos damage yung DNA mo, mangyayari is magre-replicate din siya ng damage DNA. So, it will not, uh, if that's the case, if damage yung DNA nyo, it will not go through the process of S phase. So, parang mahahalt na lang yung yung cell cycle or other cells naman if the issue is not about the damaged DNA or parang biglang hindi lang talaga sila fit or parang their their parang destiny is not to go through the process of parang uh, dividing themselves ang nangyayari is nagiging napupunta sila dito sa G0 phase so dun sa G0 phase they are being uh, considered to be inactive so nandun lang sila and they will not be they will not divide okay so if they are in a G0 in an active phase they wait for their signals when conditions improve lang okay because we have types pa of parang cells na nandito sa G0 phase kasi we have G0 phase so ibig sabihin uh, parang merong cells na napupunta sa G0 phase na parang they are just waiting for a signal or parang pag uh, uh, appropriate na yung environment they will undergo na ulit yung yung cell cycle or meron naman din tayong type ng, uh, ng cell uh, we call that the post-mitotic cells so ibig sabihin kahit na may signal o kahit na parang na-endure siya ng uh, parang environment around it hindi na talaga siya magmumultiply or hindi na talaga siya mag-go through the process of cell cycle. For example, is the um, muscle cell and uh, the uh, neurons. Next is the G2 phase. So, what happens during the G2 phase is basically uh, it ensures that all of the chromosomes have been accurately replicated without mistakes or damage. So, yun yung important talaga na ginagawa ng G2 phase. And for example, uh, may damage tayo na, na parang may damage na, na DNA dun sa replication. Ang mangyayari is, of course, hindi na siya magtutuloy dun sa, sa, sa mitotic phase. Okay? So, next is the uh, mitotic or the M spindle checkpoint. So, what happens here is it ensures that the katulad ng sabi ko kanina, it ensures that your your chromosome, bawat kinetokor sa chromosome nyo may naka-attach na spindle fiber. So, bakit kailangan nun? Bakit kailangan ma-ensure na dun sa kinetokor ng chromosome may naka-attach na spindle fiber? Because uh, the attachment of your spindle fiber to the sister chromatid will um, will turn on this specific enzyme we call that your anaphase promoting complex anaphase promoting complex so once uh, for example parang na detect ng checkpoint na yun na ah okay so lahat ng chromosome may naka attach dun sa kinetic or no, may naka attach na spindle fiber it will turn on this and a phase promoting complex and once it reaches the certain amount or sen uh, a certain concentration ng APC, it will now undergo the process of anaphase. Okay? Yeah. And this process then, sometimes it is referred to as the kinetochore signal. Now, we're going to discuss naman the internal regulation or internal regulatory molecules. So, this regulation is very crucial for normal growth and development. Kasi pag hindi nasunod tong regulation na to, 
course, magkakaroon ka ng abnormal growth or abnormal replication, abnormal division of the cell. So, the most important form of regulation involves protein-based signals called your cyclin. So, this uh, graph shows the fluctuation of your MPF activity and the cyclin concentration during the cell cycle. So, here, may kita nyo na uh, if your MPF has a high concentration, your cyclin then meron siyang high concentration and during the interface stage, di ba ito yung interface stage? During this interface stage, ang nangyayari is mababa yung cycling concentration nyo and thus, parang wala ka ring MPF activity. So, pagpapalapit naman siya dito sa mitotic phase, tumataas naman yung cycling concentration nyo and tumataas din, nakakaroon ka rin ng presence or ng activity ng MPF. So, ganun siya palagi. Okay? So, for, uh, yeah, balik tayo sa regulatory molecules, one type of that is your kinase. So, uh, specific type of kinase, cyclin-dependent kinase or CDK, these are the protein enzymes, control cell cycle that is active when connected to cyclin. So, pag mayroon ka lang cyclin, siya ka lang, siya ka lang magiging active yung kinase mo. So, if you don't have cyclin, mayroon ka pa rin kinase, pero they are inactive. Okay? Next is the cyclin. So, cyclin, sorry, Cyclin are, cyclins are proteins which attach to kinases to activate them and uh, levels fluctuate in the cell cycle. So, when, wha, wha, what do we mean by fluctuate? So, minsan mataas yung level, minsan wala, minsan meron, minsan wala. So, parang ganun yung nangyayari sa cyclin. Okay? So, what happens really is this. So, di ba? This is your whole cell cycle and katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, I... Uh, the cell, mayroon talaga siyang cyclin-dependent kinase. But the thing is, if it doesn't, parang, if hindi pa siya malapit doon sa mitotic phase, hindi pa siya nagiging active. So, let's say, for example, itong CDK na to, available lang siya during your G1 phase and then DS phase. And then here, uh, pagpapalapit na siya, if, uh, dito sa G2 phase, it will be uh, attached or ma-attach siya dito sa cyclin. Kasi yung cyclin mo, it starts to accumulate na early as S phase eh. And once it parang has the right amount of cyclin, your CDK will now parang form a complex together with your cyclin and will form your MPF. So, MPF is defined as a maturation promoting factor and that is really important for the mitosis to happen. Okay? So, again, baka nalito kayo, ma'am, nasa na yung CDK? So, your CDK and cyclin, pag pinagsama nyo sila together, you'll have your MPF. Okay? Okay. And that is very important, uh, especially para uh, the cell can pass through your G2 phase and can go to the M phase. For example, your M phase is successful. I mean, the cell undergoes the M phase successfully. Nakapag-divide siya. What will happen is... Um, what will happen is the MPF, atong MPF na to, it will switch itself off automatically by uh, degrading your cyclin. So, you, this cyclin, this violet here, it will be degraded. So, yeah, mawawala na yung cyclin mo. Pero your CDK, it will stay here sa my cell nyo. It will stay there as uh, an inactive cyclin or inactive. I mean, inactive in its inactive form. So your cyclin will be degraded, and then your CDK magiging inactive siya. Pero once it undergoes another cycle, ulit, there would be an accumulation of your cyclin again na mag na mag join together with your CDK para magkaroon ka ng MPF. So ayon yung nangyayare. Naintindihan yung ba? So ganto yan katulad ng nangyari dito kanina, de ba? No, once it reaches your metaphase or your mitotic phase, ang nangyayari is nagkakaroon ka ng high level of cyclin concentration. Pag nagkakaroon ka ng high level of cyclin concentration, magkakaroon ka ng high level of MPF activity din. So, ano ba yung MPF activity? Ma'am, nasa na yung CDK dito eh? MPF activity na yan. Di ba nga, remember that your CDK joins with your cyclin and when they join together, they will form your MPF activity. So, if you have a high concentration of cyclin, you have a high concentration of MPF only here in your M phase. Okay? During the M phase lang. Pero when it uh, it's done with the mitotic phase na, ang nangyayari is it will parang dramatically go down like this. 
uh, cyclin. So, mawawala siya, di ba? Magda-disintegrate siya. So, ibig sabihin, pag na-disintegrate yung cyclin mo, mangyayari is, wala ka rin MPF kasi wala kang cyclin. Pero once, eto na naman, magpupunta na naman siya sa uh, M phase, magkakaroon ka na naman ng mag-accumulate na naman yung cyclin mo and since meron ka ng cyclin, ma-activate na yung CDK mo and pag naging together na sila, if they form a complex, ang mangyayari is, kakaroon ka na ng MPF activity at yeah, the cycle happens again and again. <laughs> Now, uh, let's discuss naman the external regulatory factors. So, first is the growth factor. So, these are the proteins released by other cells to stimulate cell division. Next is density-dependent inhibition. This uh, is where the crowded cells normally stop dividing and cell surface protein binds to adjoining cells to inhibit growth. So, nangyari dyan, so, for example, meron ka dito na isang place dyan sa body mo. Tapos, meron ka mga cells. Yan. Well, let's say, for example, hanggang dito yung cell na yan. Yan. Cell, yan. Cell, 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 cell. cell. Yeah. So this part, wala siyang laman. So parang empty siya dyan. So nangyayari is, okay, your cell needs to divide. So parang nararamdaman nila yung may nagsisignal sa kanila. Okay, kailangan natin mag-divide para punan tong spaces na to. And if it's okay na, parang lahat ng space uh, na-occupy na, they will stop dividing. So that's the density-dependent inhibition. Next is the anchorage. Wait no. Brahin natin mga cells. Next is the anchorage uh, dependence. So, a cell must be attached to another cell or ECM to divide. So, cells, normal cells, hindi talaga sila magde-divide pag hindi siya naka-anchor sa isang surface or hindi siya naka-anchor sa ECM. Ganon yung normal cell. Okay? So, now we go to your cancer cells. So, cancer is a disorder in which cells lose the ability to control growth but by not responding to regulation. So basically, your cancer cells are abnormal. Bakit sila naging abnormal, ma'am? Kasi they don't follow the cellular regulations na tinopic natin kanina. So if parang, uh, if they follow, I mean, they don't really follow it kasi mayroon silang sariling, uh, mayroon silang sariling regulation, hindi na sila nakakontrol ng checkpoint. So, hindi na rin nila kailangan ng growth factors. Diba, kanina, growth factors, proteins that is released by other cells para i-induce yung division. Hindi na nila kailangan ng ganong factors kasi they will grow if they want to. Parang they will replicate, they will divide as much as they want to. So, that is your cancer cell. Sirang-sira na yung, yung control system niya. Okay? And for a cell to be transformed, it needs to have about 5 to 7 genetic changes. And your cancer cells also is characterized by losing its anchorage dependency and density dependency regulation. So, kanina, di ba, parang normal cell, dapat naka-anchor sila sa isang surface para, para uh, they can be able to divide. Pero kasi your cancer cells, some of the cancer cells, ang nangyayari is, even though they are not anchored sa isang, sa isang place or sa isang parang surface, they can still divide. So, ang nangyayari, pag ganun yung cancer cell na meron ka, they can travel from one place to another. They can metastasize. So, pag nakarating sila sa ibang part ng body mo, doon naman sila magmumultiply na magmumultiply. So, magkakaroon ka rin ng cancer cells doon. So, pag uh, you have a mass of cancer cells, it will become a tumor. Okay? Next is density dependency regulation. Kanina, di ba? the normal mammalian cell, pag mayroon na parang na-occupy na nila yung isang space and they think na enough na yung cells na mayroon doon, they will stop dividing. Pero kasi your cancer cells, wala silang pake kung na-occupy na isang space or hindi. Ang gusto lang nila is mag-divide. Nag-divide lang sila na nag-divide regardless if, if parang okay na yung density. Parang regardless if um, parang na-occupy nila yung isang space. So, wala silang pake. Divide lang sila ng divide. And when your cell divides, keeps on dividing, it will form a mass and that mass of abnormal cells will become your tumor. So, we have two types of tumor. The malignant tumor, which is the lump of cell that remains at the original site. I don't, I, I'm not really sure, pero I, parang, don't sinar remember ko before that uh, benign tumor, they are easily, parang mas madali silang i, parang i-gamutin i-treat compared to your malignant tumor. Kasi, your malignant tumor, they are invasive, impairs functions of one or more organs. So, ang nangyayari is, yun nga yung sabi ko kanina, uh, 
nagmemetastasize sila. So, from one cell, from yung cancer cell na yun, it will travel to other parts of the body, papunta sa ibang uh, part ng body mo. So, doon siya magkakaroon naman ng tumor. So, imagine if, for example, mayroon kang tumor dito, may tumor ka na naman sa paa, banda, tas may tumor ka. So, it will affect the whole function of your body. So, syempre, uh, masama yun, di ba? Parang we don't want that. So, another example is here, in the uh, breast cancer, di ba? Marin, for example, a tumor grows from a single cancer cell. So, marin ka cancer cell dito and then it keeps on uh, growing and dividing uh, until it forms the tumor. So, sa mammary gland daw yan, glandular tissue. And uh, these cancer cells will invade neighboring tissue, especially pag, uh, yun na nga, malignant yung tumor. So, mangyayari is, uh, yung cell na yun, it will spread, spread through the limb and blood vessels to the other parts of the body. And a small percentage of cancer cells may metastasize to another part of the body. So, yun yung delicado. Kaya parang, I don't know if it's most of the cases, pero, um, Ang uh, alam ko is parang if you have a malignant tumor talaga, especially pag sa breast cancer, tapos ang tumor mo is malignant, ang nangyayari is they tend to parang tinatanggal na talaga nila completely yung breast para hindi na kumalat pa yung cancer cells sa katawan. So this is the parang comparison of your normal cell to your cancer cell. Okay. So again, cancer cells have abnormal numbers of chromosome, metabolism is disabled, do attachment to EZM, kaya nga nakakapagpunta sila sa ibang tissues, other part of the body, and the signaling molecules cause blood, blood vessels to grow toward tumors. So that's angiogenesis. That's another, ah, uh, parang, basta, malayo na yun. <laughs> okay. So the treatment for your cancer cells is, of course, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. And personalized medicine. So personalized medicine, uh, I think, uh, as, parang, as long as I remember, yung St. Luke's Marin silang personalized medicine. Ang cool, pero ang mahal dun yan. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, as a summary, uh, you have here your cell cycle, you have the interface and the mitotic phase. So, in the mitotic phase, you have your prophase, metaphase, uh, met. Prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase and cytokinesis. And that's all for the cell cycle. I hope you learned a thing or two. Bye. See you in the next video. Stay safe.